Hi, Carl here for Pro TV. I'm joined today by Richard Payne from Holden, who are the UK distributor for Panasonic. How are you? Fine, thanks. Nice to be here. And what is this? This is a Panasonic GH5. Very nice. So I've been dying to get my hands on one of these. I've had this about 24 hours. <laughs> and Must be one of only very few in the country, is that's, that right? That's right. There aren't, there aren't many of these about mm. at the moment. Um, it is a couple of months before release, so this yes. is a pre-production model with beta firmware. Um, but it is working very well. Indeed, mm -hmm. we were out and about shooting today we were. in well, the fog. We just looked back at some of the footage and it looks beautiful. I'm really it, very impressed. It does. Um, cool. So just let's, for, um, for starters, let's run through the main differences between the GH4, which everybody knows, everybody loves. Yeah. Um, they were one of the most widely sold Lumix cameras out there, I'd imagine. That's right. They? Yeah. Certainly around the world, thousands mm. of GH4s, thousands and thousands have been sold. And now we have a GH5. That's right. So what's and different? Well, the first thing, in purely physical size, uh, this is about 10% bigger than the mm -hmm. GH4. So, you, so anybody who's built rigs, cages, things like that won't fit. Um, however, what they've done with that size is, is build in a fantastic amount of new features. So we've got in-body stabilisation, mm. um, which is a major thing, especially if you're using prime lenses like these fast SLR magic mm. ones. Uh, it gives us the ability to go handheld with prime lenses or with lenses with a built-in Im image stabilisation, it will give you even more extreme image stabilisation. So that's the new ones from Panasonic. That's, that's right. The... I can't remember all of them, but the 12, 12 to 35. 12 to 35, there's a, there's a, um, a 12 to 60 as well, yeah. which is a, which is a, starts at 2.8, which is a lovely looking lens. So so with this new lenses and the 12 to 35, you'll get this dual stabilisation mode. Mm -hmm. Also, instead of the one SD card slot we had on the previous generation, we've now got two two card slots, so we can put two SD cards. We can either write to both simultaneously or decide to write different things to different cards, so one for stills and yeah. one for video. That's particularly nice for time-lapse shooters because you can shoot your normal video onto one card and all your stills for your time-lapse onto another. It helps organise uh, it a that, bit. Yeah, that I hadn't mm. thought of it from that point of view, but that's a good yeah. idea. Also, we have a full-size HDMI terminal. The, the micro uh, HDMI terminals, as, as we all know, are not the strongest things known to man, and this is much, much stronger. Not only that, in the box with it, you get a locking mechanism, so you can screw a cable okay, great. lock into it and and make that uh, that uh, HDMI port as solid as it's possible for it to be. Um, another upgrade, as you can see on the top, we've got this XLR box. Mm -hmm. So whereas you could get the Yagi, the, uh, the extra <laughs> box which fitted below the GH4, which did give you SDI, quad SDI out as well as XLR. Chunky box. That's right, there. it was a, mm. quite big and it needed external power. This new little XLR box slots onto the hot shoe, uh, locks on like this and it immediately uses a camera battery, doesn't need separate power, That's even though it's important. got phantom power. Mm. And if you've got one of these, you're able to use a higher quality audio capture mode. You can use 96 yep. kilohertz, 24-bit uh, audio. So those audio files should be very happy with that. Mm -hmm. um, also, because it doesn't come out to a trailing lead, you keep everything internal, keeps the signal path very clean to That's get the lovely. best possible audio. Sony do the same thing with their A7 line, um, and it's been one of the most... Will, will that do 96 kilohertz, 24-bit? Not sure off the top of my head, no. but um, I, I mean purely about the taking rid of all the cables. Sure. It is so helpful when you're out there shooting just to keep it in such a small, compact body. It's sure. great. Sure. And it's lightweight as well, so it means you can shoot with professional exactly. microphones very easily. Very happy to see that. But probably the biggest thing about this camera, the biggest difference, yep. um, in fact, the two biggest differences with the GH4 is what it can shoot. So it's capable, it's, it's the first mirrorless compact to be able to shoot 50p 4K or 60p, yep. if you so desire, um, and also 10-bit 422 color space 25p or up to 30p in 4K, 4K video. Yeah. Now, That's ironically, crazy. there'll be a future update to let it do 10-bit 422 HD, uh, only coming about a month after the camera mm. release, but at the moment it can only do 4K in 10-bit <laughs> so 422. they went for the 4K 10-bit first before That's they went right. for 1080p. Exactly. 10 exactly. And this, is, this mode is 100, uh, 100 megabits a second. Yep. It's 150 megabits if you're shooting 420 um, 4 8-bit 50p. Yep. That's right. And there will be a future upgrade coming about summer this year, which will let you shoot up to 400 megabits, mm. 4K, 10-bit, 422, intra-frame. So every single frame will exist, meaning much, it's much slicker for editing. That is very high-quality recording. It um, is. I mean, that, that, that is 
very, very full high on bit rate, full on professional, video full broadcast stuff. quality spec. Mm. So, so this is is really going to take this to a new level. Does it need special SD cards? It will do, do for the 400 megabit yeah. mode. Uh, it'll need some video class cards, which mm -hmm. which will be more expensive, but but still much much cheaper than than mm. um, CF2 cards or anything else like that on the market. Exactly. Um, another exciting upgrade, which will be coming in the summer, is a 6K anamorphic mode. So you'll be able to get at the whole 20.3 megahit, well actually it will use about 18 megapixels of the sensor it, to give us a 4x3 anamorphic mode. So with a 2 times anamorphic lens you'll be able to get um, 6K video out of this compact body size and that will be recorded in H.265, okay. so the next generation codec. And it Crazy. needs to do that because every single still picture will be about 18 megapixels. Mm -hmm. This will be quite a, quite a high quality mode. And we were just chatting about this earlier, weren't we? Mm. And the 6K anamorphic, I mean, that's right. very few cameras can do that in the first place. I mean, I think we're really. just talking of the red with the helium exactly. sensor. It's, it's, it really is. It's, that's it's a 40 quite grand an exotic, camera. exactly. <laughs> It's, it's a pretty exotic thing for a camera which is you know, way under £2,000. And it might well mean that this actually ends up on some larger sets. Oh, certainly. As certainly as, as a B camera, it, it will produce some amazing results. Mm. And also, of course, because of the diminutive size, uh, you can get away with shooting on a camera this size. In, in lots yep. of locations, you couldn't possibly use a much, a much larger camera. Use it as a stunt camera, use it as a bit of a crash cam. That's all right. right. Be excellent. We've got lots of interest in using in car as well because again, the 10 bit codec will allow its uh, images to be pushed much further in post production. Mm -hmm. There will be a V log option, and the combination of the V log and the 10 bit 422 will mean you can do some significant grading to create yeah. um, push looks much further than you can with the 8 bit codec. Mm. Okay, great. So um, let's talk a little bit about the main target audience for this. Sure. I mean, obviously, the GH4 has been out for a while, loads of yeah. people have bought them mainly sort of the small, the one-man band owner-operators. True, but actually um, it's been, we've sold a, a large amount of GH4s into, into broadcast world. Heavy. They've been used on, um, from drones, because obviously very yep. small and lightweight, but also um, for in-car shoots, difficult to get mm. in areas, and like you say, crash cams. Um, so, so actually, this camera, I think, targets broadcasters more than ever because yeah. of the the ten bit four two two mode. That's However, just such a step up. I yeah, don't that's see right. why they wouldn't be interested in that. Exactly. I mean, there's also this now has better monitoring as well. We've got a, over a three point six million pixel OLED viewfinder. is mm -hmm. is the the highest resolution viewfinder in the industry at the moment. So, so yes, uh, who is it aimed at? I mean, you can, of course, take still photos with it if you want to. <laughs> It'll take 20.3 megabit raw still images as well as all Easy these videos about. we're talking about. <laughs> so, so stills photographer, so photographer who yep. wants a smaller, lighter weight camera for, for creating, um, for, uh, for perhaps being a little bit less in your face than some, yeah. some really large full frame DSLR. And I suppose in many ways, this is one of the best hybrid cameras mm. that we've seen yet. I mean, one of the best. Oh, I there think. we go. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think let, of this competition. I mean, One DX. Yeah. This is a fraction of the size, fraction yeah. of the cost of a One DX Mark II. Mm -hmm. A7R. I mean, it can do things which the A7R can't. That's right. I mean, it it really is a competitor. It, it really is, yes, and with the range of, of Micro Four Thirds glass growing and the availability of things like the, the Metabone Speed Booster, so yep. we can use Canon glass, really that, that ability to use such a large range of glass on this mm. sensor is going to come into its own. Now, we, we, we've tried this earlier today, we had yep. the Speed Booster, we uh, tried out the Metabones XL, so that's a 1.64 times yep. magnification factor Speed Booster on yep. this. Um, we had a couple of problems, didn't we? I think yeah. because it's a beta camera, it worked beautifully with the 50mm, was it a 1.8? It was a Canon 50mm 1.4. 1.4. Um, and strangely, on when you put on a lens which could zoom, it would crash the camera when you zoomed, which is a very strange bug. I think it's probably, you know, it's a third party adapter with yep. yet another third, third party, party lens, lens on, it. on a beta camera uh, pre production. I mean, what camera, version so. firmware is this? 0.4? 0.4. <laughs> right. so, so it's a, it's a very early beta. And Come be, March when and, this releases. You know, there are other issues we've had with the firmware on here, but it's, it's a yep. very beta firmware. I'm hoping to get one in the next couple of days. 
and so a new firmware in the next couple of days. So oh, we can try out the Metabones as we okay, we'll as try firmware's it again come. Days, I'll, I'll pop back and we'll, mm. we'll give it another go because it's a great, okay. I've got some Canon glass at home and it's obviously fantastic. I mean, yeah. And plus it, it means that the lenses can get wider. So it, it in fact right. takes away some of the negative aspects of a smaller sensor for people who are used to larger ones. Exactly. And it gives us um, that wonderful extra stop on, or yeah. extra stop plus. which the And there's been some says. discussion online as to whether the XL or the Speed Booster Ultra is the right one for the mm -hmm. camera and we tried out the XL and it does cover the image frame. It certainly did. It looks no like there might be a tiny bit of vignetting at 18mm. It was only mil. on, um, on the Sigma. crop lenses. Ah, it so it's a Sigma 18-35mm to 35 millimeter we tried mm -hmm. which is of course an APS-C designed lens, it's not a full frame one. So there was some slight vignetting but not that much to no, be honest. actually I, I'd have put up with it. Mm. Any full frame glass on it, there wasn't any vignetting at all. So That's right. I think we can recommend the Speed Booster XL mm. for partnering with the GH5. Right, so the lens you've got at the moment is an SLR Magic manual lens. Um, right. But with the new Panasonic ones, what's the autofocus like? Uh, it's, it's significantly faster than the previous generation. So, so the, the focus speed comes from 0.07 of a second to 0.07, 0.05 of a second, okay. fifth of a second. It's it's significantly faster. I mean, mm. frankly, you won't. It, you'll feel it is faster. You'll mm. see it. You know, the tracking performance is significantly improved, and and part of the reason for the autofocus being so much better is the brain they put in this. The mm. the, the sheer grunt of the processor power. Um, you know, it's nearly twice the processor power of the GH4 which means um, there's a new Venus engine in this, which not only improves the autofocus, it improves uh, color rendition, so there's much better color in shade as well as in highlights. There's also, um, there's also the ability to, to give you much more sophisticated noise reduction, which is why in low light this camera will outperform the GH4 by, by a larger factor than if you just looked at the sensor alone. Yeah, I mean, it definitely gets better low light. We've done a test, so I'm interested to see the, um, exactly how well it performs at those high ISOs. But it definitely should be an extra stop, extra stop and a half. That's right. Stops. I think I think you'll get an extra stop out of the sensitivity mm -hmm. of the sensor, and probably an extra stop again because of the sophistication of the noise reduction. Excellent. Yeah, great. So, I mean, when you're comparing it to the GH4, it's probably the difference between, say, 1,000 1, ISO on the GH4, 3200 ISO yep. on GH5. That's going to be massive for people like wedding shooters, event shooters. That's right. The because GH4's already because noise was always was always one of the issues of the smaller sensors. But mm. I think the, the the processing and the new sensor really um, will will negate that problem. So when are we expecting shipping on these? Um, we should have stock. I'd imagine the end of March. We're, so we're looking at the end of March. Excellent. And then extra firmware comes mainly in the summer, doesn't That's it? That's right. There's going to be a, an updated NAB to, to improve or to give you more video modes in 10-bit, mm -hmm. probably a, a, a full HD 10-bit mode. And then the summer is when we'll get the 6K anamorphic video mode. And there'll also be some, some new color functionality as well. So if you have the V-Log update, you'll be able to store four lookup tables in the, in the camera and call those up and see them on the screen. So if you're shooting V-Log, you'll be able to look at a variety of styles on the back screen, which should help you compose shots. Exactly. Help you expose, help you focus, because log is very hard to focus. It is. Right, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Nice to see you again.